Welcome, Internet, to a very special episode of the Pixel Play Podcast. This week, we are hosting our own Game Awards. That's right, the Pixel Play Awards. Move over, Jeff Keighley. There's a new show in town, and we're here to give away our awards for the games of 2023. If you like that and you want to see all of our podcasts, we post wherever you get your podcasts by searching for Pixel Play Podcast, or you can see our lovely faces as we do this on youtube.com forward slash Pixel Play Podcast or on Spotify. That's right. We are on Spotify with our lovely faces. Maybe you've seen us there. We hope you have. Uh, with that being said, let's jump into it, gentlemen. How are you guys doing? How's your week been? I felt like that was really fast. Eh. No, that was good. That was a Perfect. really nice paced bit of first conversation. Try. There. First try. Would you believe it? First try. I, I, I believe it 100%. You know, there's almost a temptation for me as the editor to splice in the original intro into this, but I'm not <laughs> going to do that because, actually, not because I don't think it would be funny. I just, it's extra work for me. I don't want to do that. I was going to say, you don't want to do the Christmas work. Christmas is coming soon. I don't want to do any extra work than I have to. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Nope. First try. Nailed it. Uh, how you guys doing? What have you guys been up to? First week back in married life. Chris, how's that treating you? First full week back uh, in married life. It is uh, the same as before, minus... When we left for the wedding, um, we had to like pack an entire wedding and reception into a few bags and then mm -hmm. take it on a plane. Well, we kind of left the mess of all those boxes and everything when we left. So when we returned, it was like, yay, happy. And then walked in the door and it was like, ah, the mess we made right before we left. Mm -hmm. And we are still cleaning that up. It was a disaster. So yeah, that's been that for sure with the whole married life. It's just a bunch of cleaning. Yeah, lifting boxes. Life. That holding does, boxes like <laughs> so what you're saying is you're so long as i don't get married i don't have to clean anything got it yep that's the, ironically that's yes actually do. that's very true <laughs> <laughs> i uh, say is i'm playing? the one in my own relationship that is definitely the one that keeps things way more clean anyway because i am a bit of a neat freak so yeah adam what, what have you, you been, been playing, playing? <sighs> should i just well, okay first off I th Chris, it's the second time this year. I think I just have to give up on Star Ocean because I don't know what it is about those games. They, the, the, no. the, whoever writes for Star Ocean games loves the concept and then forgets how to write a finish because now for both Divine Force and now playing the second story remake, I got to the second half of the game and fucking couldn't finish it because I'm like, this is so bad. This is so unbelievably bad. Like, I asked one of my buddies who loves the second game, and I said, "It did I forget something in this? Because, like, this is all really, really bad as soon as you get to X point. And he's like, well, yeah, it actually is pretty pretty rough getting to that point until, until you get to the very last dungeon. I'm like, ah, Square, why do you do this to me? So I dropped it. Yeah. <sighs> And I had to give in. All right, Kalen, I've now played Cyberpunk. I haven't yeah, finished it yet. Yeah, it happened. But let, yeah. let, let me also make you a little bit annoyed by uh, tell, by saying something. So, Kalen, how far yep. would you think I am if the last thing that I've done was basically like de like find and interrogate Hellman? How far do you think I am? Oh, um, I need more contact. It's been a while since I played this game, so... What's happened so far? You well, like the the last like major things I've done is that I'm going currently to find this guy who made this chip that I that I'm working yeah. with, and I just finished interrogating him. And the next thing I'm about to do is go and help a guy out, like infiltrate some float on a parade. Like that's kind oh, of dude, where you're I'm like at. you're barely into it. Okay, so you want to know what level I am right now? What level? Fifty. Nice, nice. <laughs> just getting lost. Get lost in the side quests. I may or may not have cleared literally everything I can on the map. <laughs> <laughs> I may have way it. more money than I actually need. I'm pretty sure I'm walking into like basic missions right now with these people being like, I don't know if you can handle it. Literally walk into a room, John wicking the shit out of it. Yes, Keanu Reeves is in the game. Of course, I mentioned John Wick. And I just kind of went, oh, that's it. All right, I guess I win. Yeah, you're probably, I'd say you're, you're like... On the shorter end of 50%, you're probably around like 40 or so percent. Yeah, I mean, based on my level, I'm pretty sure I could probably just breeze through the end of the game now and, and it wouldn't matter, but it's no fun that way because I play JRPGs way too much, so uh, OP is my default form. <laughs> I'm not interested unless I'm a god. What are you thinking so far? Like, what's your impressions of the game? Uh, I mean, I'll talk about it more when I actually fully review, which will definitely be 
in the new year because I can't imagine. I'll probably even finish it by the end of this week. So the rate I'm going, because if, if all the side stuff is starting to wither away, it's going to be really hard. Like uh, the odd new side job opens up, I guess, as I complete more major quests. But like mm-hmm. all the like the um, fixer, th- I've cleared every fixer on the map. I've done all the terror cards. So I've like done a lot of the like base collectible shit. I don't know if I've, I guess I'm not far enough to start anything Phantom Liberty wise because I don't feel like anything's mentioned it yet. So I don't think I'm there. Uh, to do this Phantom Liberty stuff, have you been like, have you been toward Dogtown yet or anything? Not really. So I get the feeling no. Okay. But yeah. Like, if I was You're to start my could time start it. so far, I'd, I'd say that. I mean, I don't know if I've been deep enough in the story to really get a sense of it. I think what I, I, th- I don't know how you felt when you played it, but honestly, like, I'm way more interested in just being in the world than I am of actually the story that's being run in it. Okay. Because, like, the entire world itself, just driving around, I have, of course, I'm on PC, so I'm listening to custom r- music. Uh, Sleep Token apparently is a great fucking band to listen to while uh, you're driving around the streets of cyberpunk. Um, I think I honestly just enjoy the little things like the game it's much how i like destiny i'm not a big lore guy with destiny but i love the gameplay of destiny a lot and with cyberpunk like i genuinely do like it's i mean it's still buggy as hell in many many ways i've encountered no no crashes but i've encountered a lot of things where i went that probably wasn't supposed to happen but we're gonna go with that my favorite thing was i was standing in an elevator trying to escape um this place i was getting out of and one of the enemies, I guess, must have had, like, one of those powers where they went to go jump and, like, ground pound me. And um, they died because they got stuck in the elevator shaft on the way down. So there is just this enemy with the arm hanging in the elevator as he just sits there, lifeless. And I'm like, okay, hit the button and I'm gone. <laughs> as expected. <laughs> but, like, I think, honestly, it's it's the world and the characters that are really selling it for me. Like, just the just the in- intrigue of... You know, characters like Judy and Pan Am and obviously having your fixtures like Wakako and I think Dino is the one I'm thinking of. We also have like Rogue and like all these other characters that even the smaller ones like we have, like I'm currently doing the races for Claire as one of the side quests. But there's all these mm. small characters, too, that I'm like, these are kind of neat. It's has gives me a similar feeling to how I, do, I play Trails games where like I'm almost more interested in the NPCs and what's going on with them than I even am in like the main story in some, in some points. So like, I'm not, I don't think I'm deep enough in the story to really have too much of an opinion other than the fact that I love the the idea that it's literally me and Keanu Reeves arguing with each other constantly right now, which is the best. My, my favorite point already is that there's a point where you go to, I guess, find this conspiracy thing and he sits there with, with you and be like, so who do you think's coming? And he gives you like the choice of like, reptilians aliens and the spanish inquisition and of course you have to pick by law the spanish inquisition and he goes huh didn't expect that and i'm just like that's that's the little things that i like just the little hits and also without spoiling anything the cameos in this fucking game are amazing like at least at this point two uh streamers slash youtubers that i love are in this game and one major a villain from another game shows up in this and it's fucking amazing. And I am yep. not going to say shit because I, I know Chris is going to have to get there at some point too. But you will know exactly what I mean about the villain when you get to that point because I went, I told you. oh my God, I can't believe this person's here. I feel like this is just vindication for me telling you all the times like play Cyberpunk, it's so good. And now you're like, man, I love just hanging out in the world and stuff. Well, I'm honestly glad that I waited at the end, though, because it meant that I got to play it on my own terms. I'm playing with a few more mods now, so I get to kind of tweak it how I want to. And at the mm-hmm. same time, it was clear of all of the backdoor, like all the all the stuff in that happened when it came out. And now the hype has kind of died down, so I'm no longer in that case of, oh, it's got, it's got to be amazing. Now I'm just like, I fucking enjoy it. I'll just have a great time on this. And that's what I'm doing. Just going around just... Nice. Uh, ripping way too many heads off with a silenced pistol that should not be as powerful as it is, but that's cyberpunk in a nutshell. Love it. Chris, what about you? What have been up to this week? Oh, by the way, Uh, that's, uh, you were just listening to Adam, uh, at CS radical and you know, now we're coming up. I I didn't do the interest. And then Chris at Jin and Chris, Ah, they know, they they know my asshole voice by now. I am a professional and I'll make sure it's done. I got a, I got a rhythm I have to follow and I'm doing it. Um, well, as I'd mentioned before, I came home from, you know, the whole wedding escapade and it's been a lot of at home work. So a lot of real life has been in the way of me playing games. So Mm -hmm. I've only had a couple hours 
However, those couple hours involved me purchasing and installing Phantom Liberty and also playing Cyberpunk. Oddly enough, me and Adam. You know what? Did we both just decide to give Kaylin a Christmas present early? It's it's also your birthday. (laughs) Like, what is going on here? Like, as soon as Adam started talking about Cyberpunk, I was like, oh. That's weird. That lined up awkwardly, but perfectly. <laughs> um, I'm I restarted the game though, because uh, I had played maybe like two or three hours, and that was a year ago at least. It was whenever they finally released the next gen version. They put mm-hmm. the game at like fifty percent off, and I bought it day one, but it got lost in the backlog because oh, ooh, something shiny, something shiny. Um, and then once I heard that these updates were coming in, and two point oh was going to come out and all that, I'm like, okay, I'm going to wait. And then it finally just felt right to go in. I was like, I need something that's going to be fun to play over the holidays and something I can kind of just ease into and that be my game for a while. Uh, and that ended up being it. So I I upgraded, I bought the expansion and I restarted. So I'm seeing already what I've seen. I've only done the first two hours, which is basically the intro. Uh, I rechose uh, City Kid or City, whatever nice. it's called. Uh, yeah, I that's still went Corpo again. Up. You went Corpo again. That's like my least, that would be my last choice, I feel like, when looking at the options. But Honestly, for it's me, worked it was... out nicely. You talk your way out of a lot of shit in that game through being Corpo. Mm, that's true. That is true. Um, I guess the story so lends I... itself to being a street kid, though. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, so far, I feel like that could be true. That could also just be because I'm in, only in the intro for the second time. Um, but yeah, like, it actually feels different. I don't know what's changed since I played like a year ago, but something Everything. definitely felt very different, even just with the gameplay and stuff in the first part. I don't know if it was that it was more smooth. Um, when I was playing, I was like, what the, this is a lock 60 FPS. What the hell's going on? I checked the settings. It was already set to performance mode, but I definitely would have tried performance mode before and did not feel it being this like. 60 fps game locked at 60 so it definitely felt a lot smoother and a lot nicer and i feel like it even looks a little bit better too like i don't know if they just up the textures or the graphics slightly i don't know what it is um but it definitely looks like the game that i was expecting like two and whatever years ago when it came out (laughs) Um, but yeah, I'm loving it too. I actually can't wait to go and play a bit more tonight. Um, it's going to be my going in for a few hours a day game, living that cyberpunk life, uh, and just, uh, living it. I'm playing on PS5. I kind of wish I did get it on PC like Adam. Um, but I already bought it on PS5 like last year. So there's no point in buying it all over again. It's just that with the updates, it runs really well on Steam Deck now and the ability to like play mm-hmm. on the TV and then also like, I'm going to bed, just kidding. And it's just me in a Steam with a Steam Deck in bed. Um, <laughs> that, I mean, is the dream, but uh, maybe one day PlayStation Remote Play will get much better and actually work with my Steam Deck well, but it won't because my internet sucks. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But yeah, I'm loving it so far and I can't wait to play more. But again, like Adam, I'm way behind Adam. I'm like two hours in, so I won't have much to say about this. Um, I mean, look, since uh, I started, it's basically what I do when I'm not at work. So I yeah. may have I may have put in, I think when I just saved before we started the show, I think I was at just shy of 40 hours now, so. Oh, wow. So I'm 38 hours behind. Nice. Uh, <laughs> get on it. <laughs> yeah, I will. I definitely can't wait to to get in there. And I'm excited for the Phantom Liberty stuff and all that, too. Like, that's it's exciting. It's, it's exciting. So much better. It's so good stuff. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad that my badgering has convinced you both to play that amazing game. And I'm glad that you guys are both like you weren't convincing us. We were going to play it. It just happened to work out at the same time. I didn't say convince. Right I said the badgering. And we're just going with that. That was our Christmas yeah. present. No. You didn't convince us. We did this for you. I never said no, I, was I said badgered. I badgered. Yeah, I was fully badgered into it. I wanted to play anything else, but no, I'm kidding. <laughs> as a, as convincing as a kid just going, please, 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 please. That's not convincing. It's just eventually you break down. That's what I've done to you guys. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, uh, I this week finished. Uh, actually, I finished two nights ago. Finished Spider-Man. So I'm done that. All Thoughts? done. Nice. Opinions. Um, better, better, you know, worse I, than the I, first. I, uh, I think the first is better. Uh, I think the first is a better game as a whole. Um, but that's like being third place in the, or being second place in the Olympics. I still think it's better than Miles Morales, but like it's being second place in the Olympics. Like, sure. It's not first, but like there's a lot below you in terms of that. So I liked it. I still wasn't a huge fan of the boss battles. I found Peter Parker very whiny in this game and I didn't really like that. Um, 
it didn't I, I got that they were trying to get this like emotional sort of conflict and it just sounds like Peter Parker's whiny the whole time uh, I didn't like it I liked Miles Morales in this game I thought he was really cool um, I thought the Venom boss fight was a little underwhelming like it takes oh, place interesting in, take it, it takes place in a like spoilers if you don't want to listen take your headphones off for like two minutes uh, it takes place in a, in a high school gym and a football field like because well, it's kind of meant this... to be like them coming back to when they l- were last like really at their at their best friends because they were I away mean... for so long right sure but it's really on the nose and like you've got this massive venom and like you could have like this fight across the city and it's like oh we're having a fight at our I mean, high school they kind of did but in cutscene form i guess after that but you know yeah like it's just eh, it is lame it was an underwhelming fight for venom but well i mean and I then my how you and then my amazing because the, the, a real fight he just would have kicked your ass and you would have eventually given up and hit a church bell and you would have won yeah and then, but like, also, and if you have your headphones on, still spoilers. Um, like, and then Miles is the one that like does like the the finishing blow. It's like Miles doesn't even know who like Harry is and doesn't give a shit. Like, he met him once, and he's like, not even once. It was a phone call. Like, I, I don't know. Maybe that's I, why it, he could do the finishing blow. Maybe he's like, I don't maybe. give a fuck who this is. Bam. I like, I liked it. I I really liked it overall. I like the story as a whole. Peter Parker kind of sucked in this one. It wasn't my favorite portrayal, um, but it was fun. I liked it. I'm going to platinum it. I'm going to go back and do all the cleanup of the missions and stuff like that. So nice. uh, yeah, uh, that's kind of my initial thoughts. I would, like I said, still a great game. I'd put it like a solid eight, eight and a half, maybe. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm at with that one. Maybe a nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's around there. The story, nice. the story was good. I didn't love the characters. What, Chris, you had like a look like, really? Oh, somebody moved a table on the first oh, okay. floor. You guys really couldn't hear it. And it sounded like someone was being murdered. No. <laughs> do, you, do you want to check on that or just wait no. for a surprise? Oh, no, no. It's actually just a table moving. You don't want to see it coming. I got it. Uh, yeah. Gentlemen, well, with we'll that being said, anyway, we see the stairs behind him. We'll let him know. Yeah, I can just I'll just well, be we, like, oh, no. no. Well, it depends. It depends on what the person who's about to kill him is wearing, because it might be funny for content. <laughs> This, Great. This podcast is, if it's if it's this somebody dressed taken... up in a Thomas the Tank Engine, I'm letting this go. I need to see how this <laughs> no, ends. <laughs> anything but that. Actual murderer, okay. Thomas the Tank Engine, no way. This is taking Get a the hell out of my turn on the podcast. <laughs> we're now going to switch. We're going to switch this over from a game on the show, Kalen. Compared to we're, what? we're pivoting. We're pivoting from a, a a gaming weekly thing. We're going to do a murder mystery podcast. Those do better, anyways. It's, it's more niche. They do. More... They actually do. Think of the numbers, yeah, I know, right? I know. I'm kind of rooting for this murder. I don't know. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> you Do know it what for I the am, content, whatever. Chris. Die for us. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, this this potential award with your name on it is, is going to not make any sense. <laughs> with the, yeah, as you mentioned, the awards. Let's jump into it. Uh, we've come up with our own categories for awards. It kind of all pulled together some of the games that we want to talk about. Made our own awards, and so we're going to go through those and then do a. Uh, we're each going to do our top three picks, and it'll probably be ones that you hear come up a bit. But just some rules and context for the most part. We are sticking to games released in 2023. These are not necessarily saying that these are the best games. These are games that resonated with us. You know how the internet and opinions work. I don't need to communicate it with you. You know with the drill. Yeah, with all that our being said, are wrong. We know that's how the internet thinks. Yeah. Except sorry, mine because you guys both confirmed. <laughs> um, with that being said, let's jump into the first one. Our first one is all hype, no finish. This is the biggest disappointment from this year. One that we had high hopes for. One that you know everyone was excited for. One we were looking forward to, but just didn't live up to the hype. Who would like to go first? I'll start off and and do the one that pains me to say the most. Uh, Horizon Forbidden West. Even though I actually like Horizon, I didn't mind. Like was- I don't hate that game. But like considering how hyped I was going into it and when I left being like this, this was the first game that I went, I just need to breeze through the story because I can't take this bullshit anymore. And that was a point that I did not expect to be in in Horizon because Horizon was that game that when I played the original that I went, I can play this friggin mode all day. I love going around like sliding around and just taking out every friggin robot that's out there with my bow and arrow. And eventually in Forbidden West, I went, this isn't fun anymore. I feel like I'm actually doing work than playing. We are getting through this so we can just get to the end 
And even at the end of the game, like, I'm not sure I'm even all that psyched about a third game, even though I will play it, but I'm not as psyched as I would have been had I going in realized that there was going to be... If someone had told me before I started Forbidden West there was going to be a third game, I would be so stoked. And now I'm like, eh. Because, I mean, I had other ideas of picking, but, like, this is the one that stood out of just being, like, my my like most hyped game that just didn't hit as well as I thought it would. Um, are you talking about like the Burning Shores DLC or the game itself? Because no, like if, if somebody had told me that there was that they were setting up a sequel for a third game in this thing, I would have been like, oh, that's awesome! I can't wait to see more of it. And now that I'm at that point, I went, no, nah, I'm I don't know if I actually care that much about a third right now. Okay, just for record, that is a 2022 game. Is it? It is. Well, then fuck it. It's Every Hogwarts 20. Legacy because go figure. <laughs> <laughs> that, was my, that was my backup plan. See, time is <laughs> fucked up, man. Oh, it's, it's, time is weird after, the, after COVID. Well, Chris, then it's Hogwarts Legacy your... because that's the closest thing I can think of. Fair enough. I don't have a lot Chris. of games. Like, I generally know my hype levels. Hogwarts is just a case of like, I hope this doesn't suck. And then I played it and went, ah, this kind of sucks. <laughs> womp womp. Mm. So... I didn't have one that was like extreme hype and then it like let me down. Um, obviously some games didn't live up to the hype, um, but not where I was like devastated where it's like, man, this is going to be my game of the year. And it turns out it's like a one out of 10. But mm -hmm. I will actually say that for me, and I hope this came out this year because the time is weird, uh, Redfall. And not yes. because I was overly hyped for Redfall, but me and some friends, Adam included, um, will sometimes get together and do a co-op four-player shooter together. We've done Left 4 Dead. We did all those games. We did Back for Blood. That was fun. Like Even if it didn't live up to the hype, that still at no point to me felt not fun. I enjoyed playing that with friends. And to see that Redfall was so bad that we never even tried to play it as a group or started it, that for me was probably my biggest letdown of the year because it was going to be my co-op shooter game for the year with my buddies. Um, and like, it was just basically a big, no, no, do not play, do not enjoy, do not go past go, do not collect $200. Like just not a good game apparently. So I, I can't even confirm if it was that awful, but it does seem like it's that awful and uh, got to miss out on some friendly co-op shooting because of it, you know? Yeah, you know a game is bad when six months later and you're like, no, I don't have that much else to do. And you're like, no, I still am not going to try that, though. <laughs> I'm yeah. bored. I'm not that bored. Also, <laughs> yeah, I checked Kayla. I don't know why the hell I thought Forbidden West was this year when it was February last year. What's wrong with my brain? Yeah, time, time is weird. Look, see, time is weird. Maybe I shouldn't have played Cyberpunk. It's screwing with my head. Oh, oh know, you think it's like 2154? Keanu in my brain and screwing me up. <laughs> Knew I'm it. surprised no one, none of you guys mentioned Starfield, but... Because uh, Starfield wasn't yeah. a disappointment to me. I had low expectations going in. Fair in enough. fact, it would be the opposite. I thought it would be all, or no hype, all finish. Um, for me, the all hype, no finish goes to Final Fantasy 16. You had your shot Square Enix, you took it. What a failure that was. I, Jen's just over in the corner, and she's just laughing at that comment. But yeah, Final Fantasy 16, uh, it was absolutely... Um, yeah, it... <sighs> JRPG, it had a shot. And I'm like, oh, man, this looks right up for me. It's like Game of Thrones, political intrigue, different kingdoms at war. What a cool, like, moving away from, like, the tropes of the genre. And then, like, not even 10 hours in, it just devolves into, oh, look, you're a good guy fighting against an evil god who and it's like, fuck. It's all right. We'll get so, you next time. No. No, you had Kingdom your Hearts shot. Four, you. baby. That's bullshit. You'll, you'll, you will try Super Mario RPG and you will like it. And I'm not even saying that hat like jokingly. You will actually enjoy that one. That no. that is probably the only chance we actually have because yeah. that is a delight. If I'm being game realistic, for... that's our one shot. Yeah. No, baby's first JRPG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just devolves into like all the tropes I hate about Final Fantasy and just dragged on way too long. And I was too far in, and I'm like, no, I'm too far in to not finish this. But I was, it sucked. I hated it. There you go, Final Fantasy 16. Put that on the box art. <laughs> uh, second, second one, uh, All Nighter. This is a game that we just could not put down. Um, so, yeah, games that, you know, we were constantly coming back to, always thinking about, you know, when, like, you get a game, like, for me, it was Splinter Cell, and, like, you'd think about, like, oh, I'm in a dark space, and you'd, like, think of, like, what the stealth bar would look like. It's that kind of game, that game that just lives in your brain. So, uh, we'll start this time with Chris. What was your 
all nighter game. Oddly enough, and I don't know if it was just the time of year or just like I'd been itching for that play style for so while, but it was mm -hmm. Assassin's Creed Mirage. I was playing that game, actual all-nighters, like looking at my watch on a Tuesday and it's 5 a.m. and it's like, oh, it's actually well into Wednesday now. I have to work in three hours. Night-night. Like, that I grabbed me. And it was not because, like, the story was that amazing or anything. It was just that addictive gameplay where it's fun to run around a city, do assassinations, find a target, do the side missions. Like, it just grabbed me. And I think it's because for so long I've been craving that old Assassin's Creed. And, uh, you know, it just... Yeah, that's it. It just grabbed me, and it, I played it all nighter, all nighter, all the time. Adam, which one? Which which game grabbed you? This this Not was an a tough one. Way. I had like at least five different games that would qualify very easily for that for being games that I'm like I should not have finished this in less than a week, and I finished this in less than a week. Good lord. Um, but because I I feel like as the JRPG king, the actual JRPG king, I have to throw a bone to my boy, uh, the Legend of Heroes: Trails into Reverie. It may not have been a, my favorite Trails game. But, like, it's still, like, essentially the, like, post-DLC of just, like, silly fun. And that game was just like, yeah, I'm just going to go here and just play. I don't care that this is going to take me 60 hours. I'm going to enjoy every second of this, whether I like it or not. Because this is literally 10 games of storytelling all put into one nicely wrapped bow. It's basically like Avengers Endgame, but in game form. I'm just like, look, this is going to be nothing but fan service. And I am okay with spending all day, every day playing this shit until I'm done. We're good. But like, there, man, nice. there are so many different games I could have done this year. This, this was a really good, like, we've talked about it before, how good this year was. A lot of games like that where I'm just like, man, I could have finished this in like three weeks and it's been five days and I'm done. Well, shit. <laughs> um, for me, the one that I just couldn't put down that just lives in my head is Starfield. I... That game has its flaws. That game is not the best Bethesda game of all time. But man, if you just want to go live at a sim of being, you know, a space explorer, that game is just amazing. Like, go out and be a space ranger. Go out and be a space cowboy, you know, space pirate. Like, from a space sim, I, I dug it. And it was one that I was constantly thinking about and I was constantly playing. And just when I wasn't playing, I wanted to play it. So, yeah, for me, it's Starfield. Good pick. Uh, the next one is, uh, I think Adam came up with this one, Console and Chill. These are the games that uh, were just like the most relaxing for us, the most chill. Um, shut your brain off. And I'm going to give a special mention to one because it doesn't qualify because it came out last year. But I'm going to give a shout out to Paradise Arcade. That game is just the most chill out That's game fair. ever. I can um, agree on that you're one. You're running a laundromat. Your your dad wants you to run the laundromat. You don't give a shit about laundry. You don't want to live in your dad's shoes, man. You want to build an arcade. Arcades are going to last forever. No one's going to be washing laundry in 20 years, but arcades will live forever. Yeah, man. they will. We'll wait. Yeah, they will. Um, it's just a fun game to just throw on a podcast. It chills out. Even not without a podcast. It's got just some chill vibes, and you're just doing laundry and playing video games. It's such a great game, but... With this being 2023, the game I'm going to give it to is uh, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. This is a very cool, chill out game. Uh, I've discovered it uh, last couple of mornings. I've been getting up early. My kid has a cold, so he's been sleeping until like nine or ten, which is great. And I'm getting up at six and I'm just hanging out downstairs, you know, still dark outside. I've got like one light on like the lamp on and I'm just sitting there playing Legend of Zelda. And it is just such a chill vibe to hang out there and just play that. So Tears of the Kingdom for me is my chill out game of 2023. Very um, nice. Uh, I'm going to go with the obvious pick for my taste. Uh, Coffee Talk Episode 2 Hibiscus and Butterfly because it's literally another game about just being a barista in a chill out D&D &D era, like modern era Seattle coffee shop. And it the, like, again, if anybody's never played it, go on Spotify, look up Andrew Jeremy and just listen to his soundtracks for Coffee Talk, and you'll understand why it's the most chill music you can listen to. It's so fucking good. And it really is the full sense of a cozy game. It's just, just sit back, listen to these really lo-fi beats, just relax, and just enjoy the story where it's almost like Cheers, just a little more you know modern day, a little more uh, heavy in some areas, but mostly just... Go go chill with your elf and orc buddies that just want to, you know, have a nice cappuccino. 
And Norm. No, and no Norm. one likes that guy. What? Everybody I loves Norm. I think, I think everybody does. I yeah. know. I think they'll cheer, but he came in there. That, that was his thing. Everyone went, Norm. Uh, you look, I'm going to spoil you? it for okay. you. Uh, those people weren't real that were cheering. Can I blow your mind for a second, guys? You know the cast of Cheers. How old do you think they were when that show was being made? Oh, they were probably oh, like in their twenties. Thirties. They were their twenties. Yeah, they were all in like their like early to mid twenties. Yeah, we really don't understand what somebody who was twenty five actually looked like back then. Like, as a wrestling fan, like going back and watching like seventies era and eighties era wrestling, and you look at a guy who looks like your dad when he's forty five, and they're like, "That guy's twenty seven. and you go, "No, he's not." <laughs> it was all the hair. It was the hair and the mustaches. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh. So oddly enough, I had written two choices down for my most chill, just in case you guys took one of mine, and they were. It's uh, not a take. It's not a draft. Two. It's not a draft. You could literally have the same one. I know, but I wanted to keep it different. He wants and to be special. Wrote, and I wrote "Coffee Talk Two" as my first one, and then "Tears of the Kingdom" as my second. <laughs> <laughs> guys took both my answers. I quickly Once just again, checked. Not a draft. <laughs> I quickly checked. I'm like, was there anything else cozy I played? And I was like, fuck, not really. Um, but no, if I had to pick one, it would be Coffee Talk 2. That was, I was so excited for that to come out. Just like Adam, um, the first game was like super cozy. I still listen to the soundtrack sometimes if I'm doing something at home, you know, just cleaning up or or folding laundry, that kind of stuff. And that game is just still so cozy and so perfect. I... I will go back probably to it, but I'm more just excited for the idea of a Coffee Talk 3. Um, I played it on my PC. Uh, oh, no, this time I actually played it on Xbox because it came to Game Pass Day 1. Um, I would love to actually pick that up on Steam and have that like on the go on my Steam Deck. I feel like that would be a really good way to enjoy the coziness of that game. But yeah, definitely Coffee Talk 2 if I had to pick my top. Which you do and you did, so... I do and I did. Yeah, I followed the instructions. It is the correct <laughs> choice. Yes. Uh, the next the next award we've got is it's all fun and games. This is the most fun game. Not necessarily the best, not necessarily the greatest story, but just the one that is the most fun to play. With that, uh, we'll throw it back to you, Chris. Since you had, had no choice. <laughs> for me, I actually chose Jedi Survivor for this one. Star Wars Jedi Survivor. And... I'm sure there's other games that would definitely be up there too for just like addicting fun gameplay, but there's just something about the action in that game where it's lightsaber, jump, wall run, jump, lightsaber, this deflect blast, laser blaster, whatever, back at Stormtrooper at a distance here. Like the actual gameplay of that is so much fun. Like I always love when those games come out because i can sit there and play it for so many hours on end and i don't get bored of the gameplay it doesn't get that point where it's like all right you know what it's been four hours of this i need a break i don't need a break as long as the gameplay stays like that i do not need a break it is so much fun and satisfying so i definitely put that as my number one for fun uh yeah i'll, I'll jump on that because i'm in the same boat uh i put jedi survivor as mine as well it was a toss up between that and Spider-Man and Spider-Man is fun from a perversal standpoint, like web slinging across the city is so much fun, but the, the combat and the gameplay of like fighting gets very repetitive in Spider-Man. Whereas I don't feel it's as repetitive in Jedi survivor. It's constantly mixing up with the different fighting styles, different styles of enemies, different things that you're doing. I really liked it. And I mean, it's just so cool to have a lightsaber. I think the lightsaber is one of, if not the coolest weapon in fiction ever made. So, um, oh, yeah, like it's it's fun and like having the different varieties of how to do things really good. So yeah, Jedi Survivor is my most fun game. Well, uh, I'm also gonna. No, I just kidding. I don't care about that game. Uh, I'm going with <laughs> Hi-Fi Rush as my favorite, just because. Not even just with the gameplay, but even the everything about that game just oozes fun because the graphical vibe is much like that. The rhythm based, you know, music part of it is very fun and and lighthearted. The story, the way that it's told is very fun. The boss battles in its way are its own like fun little bag of tricks that it does. And then the gameplay just being this very chill, like, like unless you've turned it up to the higher difficulties, but I don't because I don't hate myself. Uh, you know, just playing a game that's more about just vibing to the beats and whacking the shit out of a bunch of robots with your guitar. How do you not find that uh, just 
unbelievably fun. I had a couple of other choices that I could have made, but in the end, I'm like, man, there isn't anything I can say about this game that isn't just just screaming fun at me. So, like, how can I not pick this? Like, also, I, I also feel like I say... need to owe them something because, like, my God, I, I really feel bad. I want to give them so many awards this year, but so many good games came out later on. I legitimately thought this was a Game of the Year nominee for me at the start of the year, and then all these other things came in, and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I also just say I'm very glad I didn't go last again because I had two choices. And once again, you guys took both of mine. I'm clearly your son and I have both of your genetics and enjoy the same things. There's no other explanation as to why this will keep happening. I mean, look, I'll be shocked right. if you match with me for any more than one of these. So, Okay, let's see. I'll let, I'll let Chris go first again. Uh, <laughs> next one is playing it for the plot. This is the best story that we had in gaming. So once again, not oh, that the best that overall. Means? Yeah, <laughs> uh, just the best entertaining story, not necessarily the best game or whatever, but best story. Chris, so we don't steal your choices. <laughs> it's fine. I don't actually have to go first, but uh, I will say mine. For me, I did end up picking, picking Spider-Man 2. Um, I did actually really like the story. Um, the traversal in that game is fun. The graphics are fun and the story is fun. For me, like obviously the combat is what it is. It's, it does get repetitive and stuff, but just the traversal and then having the different story elements, including the side quests and stuff play out. It's one of those games where I actually wanted to play the side quests because I enjoyed the actual like bits of story a bunch of them even gave and stuff. So I had to give it to, uh, to Spider-Man two for that one for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, obviously we gushed a lot about on our spoiler cast, which you can watch also on the channel here on YouTube. So check that out if you want to see all our spoilers on that. But like the fact that the way that that, that story was done was, you know, it did a very good job of encapsulating all the main characters that we were looking to see and all the side stuff. Like there were legitimate side quests that I was like, man, this is getting me a little emotional. Like this is insane. Like I shouldn't be feeling this way. And, and I mean like in a sad way. And then there were also like the, I guess like the Spider-Man no way home film level, like where they pull somebody in is as like a big reveal. And you're like, like they did so many things right in that game where it was just mm. depending on what you want. If you wanted emotion, it was there. If you wanted surprise, it was there. If you wanted badassery, it was there. Like everything that you were looking for was all told in the story one way or another. And it was very well crafted. I loved it. Yep. But it's not my choice, actually. Which, oh, I, yeah, which, your was, choice. which was surprising, but like then I realized, oh yeah, this game was also in 2023. <laughs> Uh, I know none of you have played this. Uh, it's called The Space for the Unbound, which is made by the same uh, production studio that did uh, Coffee Talk, Chris. So it's oh. the same. I think I might have talked about this at one point. Uh, it's very much in a side-scrolling, like, narratively told, like, sort of adventure puzzle game, but it's mostly just like a walk-and-talk, like, sort of visual novel-ish kind of simulator there. But it's done in very much like an old-school, like, SNES-level graphic setup looks very good for for being pixel art and such and what that story did and the only reason that i put it over spider-man was because i don't think i've ever felt so strongly emotional about a game like i legitimately cried playing this game i don't cry like at all like e even in like the most depressing parts of the last couple of years of my life i did not cry this game made me fucking cry so it's it's one of those games where um dealing with things like loss and growing up as a kid dealing with said loss is a very uh is a very interesting concept because i mean i grew up not losing anybody in my family when i was young but i knew a friend who lost their their little sister when she was like i think she must have been like five to a car accident like out like just across the street from the school like that day it was just something just absolutely horrifying and remembering how he took that and like we didn't see him for a little while because obviously just dealing with that trauma but like just the idea of how this game handles issues like that and other things that without spoiling because this is a game that i suggest anybody try because i'm i guarantee you almost anybody listening to this hasn't heard of it and it's on steam i don't think it's too expensive you got to give this thing a look because if you're looking for something that is much more about the narrative than anything else it's not a very gameplay intensive game there's a little bit of puzzle sort of management and stuff like that but it is basically 95 percent all about its narrative and it is remarkably well told and that studio has just got I, I i don't know what it is about those guys over there at toge productions but they really know how to craft just an amazing world because they've done that now with a couple of games and i can't wait to see what else they come up with because this one was just amazingly emotionally well told 
So, Adam, what's that? Like, now you've sold it to a couple of people. What's it called again? A Space for the Unbound. There you go. Check it out. Um, for me, I'm basic as hell. Uh, I'm, like, going to cheat. Um, for me, I'm putting, be- for playing it for the plot, best one for me is Cyberpunk 2077's Phantom Liberty. Is it a DLC? Does it count? I don't care. This is my game. This is my award show. It came out in 2023. counts. But is it a game? That's the question. And I'm yeah. going to go with it because it's my award show. thought it like was. It. That's all we need. There you go. That's true. Good enough for Jeff Keel is good enough for us. Good enough for Jeff. <laughs> I, I loved it. I thought this was like such a cool story. Like it tries to capture that espionage film noir style. You know, everyone's out like who's who's betraying you, who's double crossing you. You don't know who to trust at any given time. Um, I was just constantly just like, oh, shoot. Like I'd have a call with like Idris Elba and I'm like, oh, man, like what's his angle? What's he trying to do? I'd talk to like. The other characters i'm like what what's their angle what are they trying to do and trying to figure out like who's who's being honest with me who's burning me and like there's twists and turns and everything and it just it constantly keeps you guessing and it really captures that you know espionage style um like story and it just it's amazing i absolutely loved it like i still think about it to this day and i would like sit there making like what do i do in this situation like i'm presented with a choice and like I'm buying this person, but like now maybe I don't. And maybe I'm now trusting this person. Like my allegiances and like my trust constantly shift. It was just so well done. Check it out. guys. Damn. It's really good. Yeah. I'll get there. Uh, eventually. Yeah. When you guys get there, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Uh, next one is, um, eye candy best looking game. Not necessarily like a most high fidelity. This could also be like an art style, but which game just made your eyes pop. Which ones do you now show your mom who doesn't care about video games? Be like, mom, check out how good the graphics are. And she's like, that's nice, honey. I thought it was What's our grandma. That Cause that's the, cause that's our clientele apparently on the show, right? No, it was mom's. It's your mom's favorite mom's. podcast. Your mom's yeah, favorite. Well. We're doing it for the moms. All right. Yeah. Um, All right. I had a bunch of different choices. Cause it really depends on which kind of style you're looking for. Cause I mean, you got like hi-fi rush with its cartoony style. You have Spider-Man, you have cyberpunk. Um, in the end, I decided to go with Sea of Stars because it, it basically came down to what was the one that made me personally go, I cannot believe how gorgeous this is. Sea of Stars ran away with that. I cannot believe how incredible a pixel art game looks as, as much as this one does. And I hope that we'll see more developers down the road look at what Sea of Stars did and and see that and go, Oh, so we can make amazing shadow detail, like lighting and stuff like that in a Pixar game. And it doesn't just have to be something that looks like a Super Nintendo game. No, we can make this a modern pixel game. And that game, like as much as I have my faults with it, you know, in retrospect, I cannot knock just how fucking gorgeous that game is. There just is no beating around the bush on that. Nice. Chris, what about you? What's your eye candy eye popping? For this one, I was torn between two games and I ended up settling again on Spider-Man 2. Uh, And it's it's not like even necessarily like the buildings and stuff like that, like the actual environment. They were gorgeous, but it's just every time I think of like taking like that moment where there's a close up of one of the two Spider-Men in their suits and the way the suit looks and everything like that. It's like, damn, that looks like real material. Like it is crazy how nice they could make some of those characters look even with the symbiote stuff and all that like they did such a good job on the actual characters and the the detail there so i had to give it to spider-man in the end when i was going through all the games i played had to yeah i don't know if it's a situation of recency bias but i'm going to give it to spider-man as well um it just looks incredible. Like there's nowhere where you feel like they're skimping on details. Like yeah. web swinging through the city. It, it looks like a city. Like I did the, the middle, like not performance, not resolution, but I did that middle one with like some ray tracing and some perform like, um, frame rate. And I just, I keep getting blown away of just swinging through the city and how amazing it looks. The water effects, like it looks like a real city. And like the, the suits have like, fabric to them it's just it's unreal mm-hmm. how good it looks so yeah for me it's spider-man yeah good pick good pick yeah uh next one is i think this one was adam's nomination coffee date this is our favorite character from this year the person who we'd want to hang out with uh our favorite character of the year yeah Adam, i, I, I could have said coffee or beer day but beer day just sounds really really weird so <laughs> beer date <laughs> that's just a date 
<laughs> Caleb, Who'd you go with, Adam? Go oh, I'll go uh, first on this one. Uh, no, it's fine. Um, so I go two ways with this. Um, one of my favorite. I'm gonna have two. No, no, no. I if you find two, you're cheating on one of them. You can't do that. All right, then I'm going to give it to Songbird from Phantom Liberty. I thought she was a really cool character in how she was done. She has this badass kind of in charge quantity, but also like this tragic like story narrative to it, too. And I just I thought she was a really interesting and well thought out character. Really interesting and complex. And I liked them. Uh, so, yeah, Songbird from Phantom Liberty is my choice. They they have no short supply of badass women in this game. You know, now that I know. I'm as deep so in, cool. into it as I am, I'm like, God damn, they, they definitely put their foot down and be like, well, I guess it makes sense. This is the company that also came up with Triss, Yennefer, Siri, all of all the Witcher ladies that are just ass kickers too. I mean, so it's like technically the Witcher came up with those characters, but I'm with you. <laughs> so why well, I meant like putting them on screen, whatever you get my point. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I liked her. Cause like I said, she, she's like very interesting in like her motivations and how she does things. And like, she sometimes goes from being like, a really sad, you know, you want to help her character. And sometimes she's like, oh no, she's, she's got this under control. So like, it's, she's a really badass character. Nice. Adam, why don't you go next? Well, it wasn't intentional that the name just kind of works out that way. And this character, it's, it's funny. They, she almost shouldn't count because she's in the game for like a minute, but I don't care. Freya from coffee talk episode two, hibiscus and butterfly is still my pick. Because if there's any goddamn person I need to sit and chill and just have a drink with, whether I don't, I, which is funny because I actually don't drink coffee or beer, so I guess I'm kind of screwed on either of those. I guess I'll have, I'll have a soda. <laughs> <laughs> a soda. Well, like Freya is just, and Chris, obviously you playing coffee talk know exactly what I mean. Like she is exactly the kind of person that you could just sit down with and just talk for hours upon the most random bullshit and it would just be a, an absolute fucking blast. And that's kind of where I went with them to this direction. I could have gone in, in more of a direction of like, okay, well, do I like how this person was crafted or whatever else? Fuck that. I want to, I want to talk to the person that I just want to literally sit down and just shoot the shit with for hours. That's my pick. Nice. Also Chris? a good pick. What was your yeah, you're both, you're both going to hate my fucking answer, but I don't care. Uh, Cause this is like one of those, you either loved him or you hated him. I think uh, it's going to be just... somebody from Final Fantasy 16, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It oh, it's Clive. Oh, it's fucking Clive. Oh, for oh, God's sake. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Clive There's is no... so Wait, fucking Chris, cr Chris has gotten such a bad take here that Caitlin and I are agreeing on something. Oh, no. That is alarming. I, I, I like, I like, and I, th I think it's coming from very different angles because you're like, <laughs> this is like the worst JRPG character. I'm like, this is just a terrible character. Like, yeah. No. I know it's like I all opinions Clive. and no opinions are wrong, but your opinion is wrong, Chris. <laughs> no. Clive is one of the coolest characters that I got to interact with or whatever. Chris got I don't off the know fence what it was about guys. <laughs> I jumped off that fence hard. Um no, but I've I've talked to other people and they like, you know, it's like, oh, it's not the best Final Fantasy or whatever, but F Clive was really cool. Um and I think it's not even necessarily Clive, it's the voice actor Ben Starr and the portrayal that he had of the character. Um, it might even be more the voice actor than it is the actual character, but I just loved it. I can't even say Joshua. I only hear Joshua now whenever I like hear the name and stuff because of him. I don't know. I just loved the way he was portrayed. I loved that character. Dude's walking around with like a cool jacket, but also like a corset. Like he don't give a fuck. That guy just the, walks around with his cool voice. He's emo kid from high school back in like 2004. Oh, you got to play a lot more Final Fantasies. He's like one of the lower in the emos, I'd say, maybe. Yeah, I was going to say, we, we also really love Final Fantasy VII, and we have to admit, like, yeah, no, Clive's got nothing on, at, like, most of the seven characters. He's a oh, mo yeah. His voice actor is a mopey, ro like, rock tumbler. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> well, I love it. And he's the character I want to hang out and have a coffee with. And then we're going for a beer, maybe a martini. Who knows? We're going, though. Just sit and mope the whole time. That's what he's going to do. He's going to sit there and just be like, Nothing matters. It's all bleh. No, I'm so sad. <laughs> Joshua. <laughs> to be fair, they gave him a lot of reasons to be sad in that game because there's no point yeah. in that game that he's ever allowed to be happy. Yeah. Which is That's another reason why I didn't That's like so that right. game. so because dumb. The game it's is so like, dumb. hey, let's not have any positivity throughout any of this game. And I'm also, like, that sounds like a great idea. No wonder I don't like The Last of Us. 
now that we've opened up the can of worms of Final Fantasy, let me talk about it. What the fuck is with the idea that you've got these people who have like godlike powers and they somehow get enslaved by the normies? Like, what the fuck is that? Like, if I have the power that I could shoot ice out of my hand, you think I'm going to be someone's bitch? No, well, I'm going to just throw ice in their face. I can't help you with that. <laughs> I'm just yeah. saying this is stupid. It's like, hey, you've got all these godlike powers and you're dangerous. How about you just, you know, become enslaved and become someone's servant? They're like, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I see no other why, things why aren't they do. like the round table, which is all of them sitting at each other and be like, yeah, fuck all of them, right? <laughs> Literally, like Clive comes by. He's like, hey, why don't you guys not be like indentured servants? They're like, okay. It's like nobody thought us. No one's like, hey, they've got a sword. I can turn into a fucking dragon. And everyone's like, nah, he's not going to. That's a person that we could probably push around. See, another reason Clive was so good. He started to end the slavery in Final Fantasy 16. Thank you for that point, Kalen. You're right. No. <laughs> Stop helping him, Kalen. <laughs> I, I, oh, cool. You picked the coolest character in a stupid game. I mean, it's still the coolest character. In a stupid game. <laughs> he is a character in a game. Uh, next one is the... Uh, Jin and Chris classic. This is my favorite the game award. that we knocked off of our backlog. So <laughs> I'm famous. Uh, I did funny. it. We, we were thinking of names in the chat and I just went, okay, we're doing a backlog award. This is a layup. Jin and Chris award. We've been, we've been talking about backlogs forever. There's nothing else it can be. It's like the honorary, you know, award of like lifetime achievement. Like that's what it is. Like if I really want to be, it shouldn't be the Jin and Chris classic. It should be the Jin and Chris award for lifetime achievement for backlog games or something ridiculously long, but I guess Jen and Chris Classic does flow off the tongue a little bit better. Uh, I guess we should yeah. leave it to him to to give the first one. Kick off, kick off your award there, Chris. Hey, first of all, do you know how fucking hard this one was for me? Holy <laughs> of shit. Of course, that's the point of the award. <laughs> like, I had to look at my backlog. I had to go into the Xbox, into PlayStation. I had to go into the Switch, onto Steam. It took I a was really smart this long year. Time. Anytime I finished the game, I wrote it down and gave my rating so I wouldn't forget what I played this year. <laughs> you guys made yeah. lists? I just I as as I go. At the lists. <laughs> My lists were large. There was many, many games. Um, 69, actually, to be in fact, nice. which was, I was very impressed with. Um, but yeah, so lots of backlog. Had to pick. And I couldn't pick one. I have a tie. And that's as close as I could get. And you guys can fuck yourselves because that's as close as you're going to get. So but you're going to cheat on them. Right, your choice. I'll just, I'll just pick one for you. No, well, I know which one you'll pick because both of you love one of these games and they're both Final Fantasy 16. No, I'm kidding. Um, so the two games I chose were Cult of the Lamb and Trails in the Sky. And oh. it's funny because I was convinced to play both of these because of you both this year. Um, and they ended up in my backlog this year. They're not even like backlog from a long time ago. They're like backlog editions of older games that just kind of moseyed them way into the backlog. Like, hey, what's up? I'm in your backlog now. I'm already an old game. Good luck. Um, but yeah, I had to pick Call to the Lamb and I had to pick Trails in the Sky because both of those games, like, I couldn't put them down. I couldn't stop playing them and it was like i don't know it was two games i would have not picked up normally i would not have played that i wouldn't have grabbed them um i think i already had trails in the sky but it was like a sale and i was like oh that looks like a jrpg but i didn't really know what it was until adam went off about trails like insane um and then cult of the lamb i knew what it was but i was like why would i run a cult that's a weird game but then kaylin oh, you're talking about it last year on the podcast as your game of the year and all that i i picked them both up and I played both of them and I was very, very happy that I both added them to the backlog and then quickly removed them from them being older games that I really didn't need to pick up, but did anyways. And yeah, two, my two, possibly my top games of the year, almost if I, if I didn't have to stick to 2023 for actual top games of the year, for sure. What's the lamb is an amazing game. If you haven't played it, go play it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. should you I make this order. painful for him? Go what, for it. What happened? All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to coin flip it. No. Don't make <laughs> what do you call it? Between he and baby. Heads is called the lamb. Tails is trails in the sky. Google's going to settle I like, this. I feel like tails should be called the lamb because animals have tails. All right, fine. Heads it, is trails in the sky because you know what? You got your head in the clouds. You know what, Kaylin? You make a good point. Heads is trails in the sky. Tails <laughs> is called to the lamb. Google decided what was the best backlog game for Chris. And it was trails in the Damn sky. It. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Google. I will give you the check in the mail later. Okay, we're done. Can't, can't argue with science. <laughs> my, my top is Trails in the Sky somehow. 
Thank you. Google. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, technically, that was in the backlog longer. That was in my backlog longer. So it's it is even also more a much backlog-y. older game. So you know what? Uh, you know, we'll we'll go with any excuse I can here. Uh, I'll go next. My, I, my God, I had so many difficult choices. I actually initially had Beacon Pines because it actually is the highest rated game when Beacon I put Pines. my list down. But I had to change my mind because I just went, no, because like, I think Beacon Pines at the time when I rated it was the best game I played. But the game that has stuck with me since I finished it and I still will constantly talk about, which is why I'm giving it the my nomination for the Gin and Chris Classic this year. And that is Inscription. Because mm-hmm. that game, I cannot stop thinking about it and I cannot stop wishing that they would do it again because the idea of a game that on the surface just looked like a regular like roguelike trading card game, much like Slay the Spire is, and it completely went into a direction I never would have even thought when I started playing that game. I, I still think about the initial first world in that game and I still think about how it ends very consistently and it's just one of those that's kind of stuck so as much as like other games that got a better rating this has had staying power which is why i'm going to give it the award over the others nice um watch this guys i'm going to make it i'm going to somehow keep it within 2023 and make a backlog game my backlog game of 2023 dead space oh (laughs) i see the technicalities pulling here (laughs) <laughs> See, I never played Dead Space, so technically it was on my backlog, and I had a chance to play it. So, yeah, I'm going to give it to Dead Space. Um, that game was just amazing. Like, I loved it. It was, it looked amazing. I was so interested in the story, like, having never played Dead Space before. Uh, it gave very much a very, like, an alien vibe, like Alien the movie. And it was just so cool. I wanted to see what happened next. Kind of freaky. Hated that one of the uh, side missions that, like, the bug kind of screwed it up, uh, that I couldn't finish that one quest line. I love the fact that they redid it with with uh, voice acting in it. So Isaac Clark has a personality and is not just a man trapped in an iron suit. Love that game. Uh, and if we're going to go that that doesn't count, then uh, the other one is going to be Paradise Arcade. Go play it. It's super chill, super fun. With a long game pass. All right. So with that, that wraps up our little fun set part of the show. Here's what everyone came for. Pixel plays game of the year. Uh, so what we're going to do is I think we each have a top three gaming list. What we can do is we can go through uh, top three. Um, yeah, with that, we'll kind of go through and, and kind of go that. So let's do our top three. We'll start. Uh, we'll go. We'll go across the list here. So I'll go first with my top three. Actually, I'm not quite prepared for that. So, Adam, you're going to go first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. Well, I guess I am prepared. Um, God, what a fucking unreal year. So I had. At least in terms of games that came out this year, I had 15 games that I finished that came out Mm. this year. I don't add things to the list if I don't finish them, So, but the fact that I finished 15 games from this year is a credit to, A, how good the year has been, and two, again, and I keep saying it, things like Game Pass, PlayStation Plus, like having these options to be able to play some of these games without spending full price and being able to access them earlier than usual has been a godsend and i love the fact that i've been able to get so much in and also thanks chris for uh console sharing so i'm able to mooch a couple off of you as well uh (laughs) so my number three speaking of mooching off chris uh, i'm gonna go with spider-man 2 again like one of my favorite superhero games i've ever played maybe the best superhero game i've ever played uh compared to the other two the reason that this one doesn't get above it is just because the narrative isn't as strong or it doesn't have that cool factor that just put it over the edge but this game is just it's it's basically like a minus across the board on everything it's all well like the combat's fantastic traversal is fantastic characters are fantastic story's fantastic i don't say i I don't think there's anything about this game i'd say is a plus but because it's all just so perfectly solid across the board that i don't really have much i can also say that's bad about it either apart from like the odd thing where at some point the combat gets to a point where you just figure out, okay, this is what works for everything. And I'm just going to abuse this. So that this battle goes a little bit faster, but like, that's a lot of games. Eventually you just go, nah, I'm just going to break this now. And that's how it usually goes. But like, what can I say that we haven't already said a couple of times when this game has come up? Just so it's such a great game. I love the fact that Insomniac has done such a fantastic job with the license I'm also, as a side note, very disappointed with the leaks that have happened for them. I feel really bad for their team for a number of reasons. It seems like more than just game dates and and other stuff like that. And like personal information may have gotten leaked out as well, which is not great. Um, 
but that team deserves all the credit in the world for the work that they put in with this game because a lot of people had I want to say lower expectations because I think people were just starting to be like, ah, this is starting to get samey. And then this game came out and I said, look, it is very much the same. And that's why it's still kicking ass. Because not every game needs to be a complete overhaul again. Chris, you're number three. So my number three is going to be controversial. You guys aren't going to like it, but I picked it because for me, I think it's my number three and it's Hogwarts Legacy. Oh, okay. that's right. Thank God. I thought you were going to say Final Fantasy. No, 16. that's going to be his number one. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> no, that's zero. That's above one. Um, <laughs> no, for me, it was Hogwarts Legacy. The game is like it, for my top pick. It's not. That's why it's my number three in the list here. Um, Cause there is still stuff I don't like about it. I did find the world way too big. When you go like a hundred meters South of Hogwarts castle, it's like, cool. Nothing down here matters. This place sucks. Um, the Merlin trials, like some of that stuff brutal like what the hell are these side quest things that are clearly here to increase the time of the game and that's it but whenever i was in hogwarts castle or hogsmeade village like i was in harry potter like it actually felt like legit especially hogwarts castle like you walk around there and it's like overwhelming at first until it just becomes like this magical thing that they have built like if the game just took place in there that would have probably even been better. Like, I, I could not believe how well they had created an entire castle that you could fully traverse, go around, fly outside, come back in. There's secrets everywhere. The secrets are super fun because it's like using magic to, like, unlock a door that you have to, like, match up certain symbols or do this and do that. I adored that game for that part again there was parts i did not like and i kind of just ignore those when i'm looking at the fond memories of this game because if i ever played it again i just would ignore all the side stuff that is too far south below hogwarts and I'd be like that doesn't exist and just play my hogwarts student going and having to butter beer at uh hogsmeade three broomsticks or whatever life like that's i would just do that because it is that part itself blew my mind i loved it so much I have such a such a conundrum as to what game is number three on my list. And Final it's Fantasy so 16. Hard. Sorry? Is it Final Fantasy, yeah, it's, it's it Final Fantasy 16? It's, it's close. It's close, I tell you. <laughs> Definitely in the top 100 of the 29 games I've played this year. Um, I think for me, number three is going to go to Tears of the Kingdom. Um, surprisingly for me, I was not a big fan of Breath of the Wild, and I was very apprehensive of Tears of the Kingdom. Um, but giving it a shot, like, I still think the story sucks. I don't give a crap about what's going on in the story. I don't care about Goat King. Like, whatever. Could care less. I don't even know. I think it's Ganondorf. Gan I don't really care who the bad guy is. But I'm just getting lost in this world. Like, I'm just enjoying these little small stories of, hey, what's over here? Oh, look, there's a, someone who I can help that's in this general vicinity that I can do something. Like, I like that and going on that adventure. I really feel like there's a sense of exploring and there's a sense of purpose. I felt like with... um. Breath of the Wild, there wasn't as much of a why am I doing this kind of thing. It was very much just cool. I'm here. I'm surviving. But why? I feel like with Tears of the Kingdom, I'm getting stronger. I'm getting better gear. I'm like getting more powerful. And it's kind of making like it's that carrot. I need to go explore the world. And so for me, Tears of the Kingdom is my number three, which is a huge surprise because I did not like Breath of the Wild. So, yeah, yeah. I would have not expected that from you. Mm -mm, the big turn neither. 2023. He went from the JRPG king to the Zelda lover. <laughs> but, but i just Adam, agree he's with slowly the, getting converted it's fine we're still working on it i definitely agree with the uh, purpose to traversal like every mm -hmm. time you find like oh there's a hole in the ground that seems to lead to a cave you know there's something in there like every mm -hmm. time you found something it's like there's a chest with a new piece of an outfit or something yep. in there that's actually going to be kind of cool and even every outfit it was like oh this makes you slip less on walls or better climbing yeah. or whatever like everything had a purpose it made and, it made it like like you had a purpose and it was useful that you could use later on whereas i felt breath of the wild it was hey i'm gonna go explore and i've destroyed three of my best swords to get to the bottom of the cave oh look cool i got like like a carrot great like not worth the trade so yeah yeah chris what's your number two or adam what's your number two sorry yeah you know what it is my okay. turn yeah shut up chris uh, we haven't heard adam in a while so 
yeah, you know. Um, I'm going to go with the space for the unbound. Like I, me- I mentioned earlier with the story, the narrative was what carries it. It's such an emotional roller coaster. And again, like the idea that um, a game that really does feel like what a Super Nintendo visual novel would have looked like. I'm sure Japan probably had a bunch of them because Japan is the king over there of those. But um, to have something like this that we never would have gotten on a Super Nintendo here in the West back when we were kids, because basically everything that we got back then was sports, racing, and adventure puzzle games, like was basically all we got until like Final Fantasy stepped in and was like, actually, there's one other type of game. And then I basically vanished for 30 years. Uh, But... At that point, uh, Space for the Unbound is just that game that, much like how, um, I'm trying to think of this, this must have been last year when I said Eastward was my game of the year back then, where it's just another showcase of how independent studios need to be given a lot more credit and a lot more attention than they are getting currently, because what they put out tends to be something that will hit you more directly as a person, whereas a lot of AAA games are there to hit as many people as possible. So a Space for the Unbound for maybe even the people here listening whether it's even Kaylin or chris themselves it may not hit them because it's definitely geared for a very specific set of people that we're going to be really turned on i still think like this story as a whole will reach most people but for somebody like me who knew someone who went through very similar things that the main characters of this game go through it definitely hits way differently and i think that the beauty of these games is that they do hit on a personal level far better than any triple a game could ever hope to and what i hope for as we continue on is that Because we are seeing a bit more leeway, or not leeway, what's the word I'm looking for? There's more roads opening up for indie developers to really get their names out there. And I hope that that means that more games, especially as the bigger names like Call of Duty got such a bad rap with Modern Warfare 3's campaign, for example, that I hope that now that attention starts to shift a little bit more to, oh, what are these smaller developers coming out with? Because we don't see them, and thankfully Game Pass is offering that too, There's all these cool experiences that none of us would normally go after. And now that games like Space for the Unbound are being easily accessible to most people, there's all these experiences that we're getting open to that we would never see before. And same like Eastward the year prior, I love the fact that I can say with a straight face now that my one of my games of the year is not X AAA game that was overly hyped, had a massive marketing budget behind it. I'm happy to say a game that most people have never heard of because I know you guys hadn't heard of Eastward, and I know Chris, you did end up playing it. Played for a bit, and you loved it. So it's like it's one of those things where like I'm glad that that's the point now that I can put on my list a game that no one's heard of, and I can get people interested in this stuff. So yeah, like again, go check this fucking game out. It's so good. Nice, Chris. What's your number two? So for my number two, it's actually Adam's number three. I went with Spider Man two. Um, just because of the sheer idea that I could pick that game up and play through it again right now, and I'd be happy to do it. Like, I would love the story. I would love the traversal. I'd do some of the side content even, not all of it, but, like, some of it all over again. Um, I just I just love that world. It's the Spider-Man world. You get to be a superhero, but on a very relatable scale in the sense of their real-life kind of stuff. Um, it makes me want to visit New York real bad. Like it just gives this vibe that I really, really like. It's the the mix of like the real life and the superhero um, on a very relatable and very fun um, uh, in a game, right? Like, I mean, swinging around New York, I could just load the game up and do that right now. Like I could just swing, see how fast can I go? How high can I go? Let's jump off the tallest building. Let's do this. Let's do that. And I would love it. So I had to give it to that one. Um, I could say more, but I mean, Adam already said so much about it, which is the reasons it ended up in my number two. So that's mine. Spider-Man 2. Just nice. just to spoil you, though, um, when, when you do go to New York, Avengers Tower isn't there. Just I'm sorry to, to ruin it for you, but... Why you got to be, man? Why you got to be like that? <laughs> Um, Kaylin. For, for me, my number two is uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Uh, it gets a bump because it is a Star Wars game, and I'm a giant, like, sorry, a nerd we for accept Star that Wars. Chris put Hogwarts as his number three, which is pretty bad, but hey, it is what it is. So, my thing with Star Wars is that, like, I didn't have a lot of, like, the like bug glitching game play aspects that a lot of people complain about. It was a relatively smooth performance for me. Um, I liked the, the like the combat was fun. The story was interesting. I like Cal Kestis as a character. Um, I like Bodhi as a character as well. Like it was 
it did a lot of things right. The combat never felt super repetitive. It was like good in terms of like the story and like some of the things like there was that one scene where you got like an optional boss fight and it was like Doug the janitor and I was like, oh man, like this guy's gonna be and it's like, no, it's a one shot kill guy. He's like just a normal guy. And I'm like, that is so clever. Um and it's just fun that like it has that traversal that um Tears of the Kingdom has as well, but I felt that the story and the characters were more engaging. The reason why it's not higher though is that I felt it was I didn't like the fact that it was really only two worlds. Like yeah you started on Coruscant but you pretty much ended up on the jungle world and Jakku. And it also came at a time where we had a lot of like, there was um, the book of Boba Fett. There was like the Mandalorian. We had been to desert planets a lot and in desert planets do not feel fresh anymore in star Wars. It, they're done to death. And so that was the big gripe that kind of put that game at number two instead of number one for me. So I don't know if, I don't know if you've talked about this cause I know both of you have finished the game um, without spoiling fallen order. Is there a boss battle similarly to the end of fallen order that feel the same way with, um, with Jedi survivor or is it yes. now much more? Okay. So there is something special in that one too. Yes. Yes. Cause I, cause I hadn't yeah. looked into it cause I randomly came across cause I hadn't played fallen order past like the first like couple hours. And when I saw what the, big boss was in in fallen order i'm like that's so fucking cool so yeah now it makes me want to go and check out what jedi survivor did because i won't play the game because there's not really interest on my mm-hmm. part but like it's still something that i want to research well i think one of the other cool things that they did that was really neat is you look at it like how do you make a game like this fresh and spider-man had the same concern like okay you're gonna be fighting more stormtroopers like it's kind of set in a time period but they kind of set it up that you're fighting like battle droids and stuff at this point you're fighting like um droids and stuff and i thought that was a really cool way of making it fresh and making it different so yeah i I liked it i thought it did a lot of things very well yeah very with that gentlemen we are at our game of the year so um adam what is your game of the year (sighs) what a fucking year right Right? um (laughs) i alluded to earlier how i was struggling to place hi-fi rush and when i went back and looked through my list again and again i kept thinking i can't put anything below this though like as much as like i think like quality wise there's so many better games there's nothing that hit me the way that hi-fi rush did i mean obviously from an emotional level with space for the unbound did it but hi-fi rush man hit me on so many levels that i wasn't anticipating because it obviously just phantom dropped on us and it hit everything that I wanted. It has that Saturday morning cartoon style of the graphics. It has the punk, like heavy rock, like sort of influence in its music. It very, it gave me that like Jet Set Radio, Tony Hawk Underground, like sort of vibe to it. Rhythm based gameplay. I'm a fucking massive rhythm game guy. Like obviously when we all hung out, we were playing Guitar Hero, and you guys know, like I was playing that shit on Expert. I love my rhythm games, so you know it's it's my it's my jam. Ha, huh, that's a good pun that I didn't even a pun actually not intended there. Um. <laughs> But everything about it, like, even the story, it's, the story, is it substantial? No, it's fucking not. It's a goddamn Saturday morning cartoon level game. Was it goddamn entertaining? You bet your sweet ass it was entertaining. Every boss battle was unique in its own way. The fact that one character was basically a walking JoJo's reference the entire time. You know, all of these cool things. And literally, like, again, one of my favorite moments, um, I don't know why I'm blanking on her name. The, um, the girl that you end up recruiting later on that's, that is one of the, the bosses in, the, like, the midway point of it. My favorite part her. is that you can fail the quick time event when you go to catch her, and you, if you miss, she just goes dead on the floor, and you're just like, oops. And it's one of those things that, like, I love the fact that it's little things that a game does to make it your own because not everybody got to do that because some people paid attention when the fight was over because they were ready for anything. Whereas I went, the fight's done, putting the controller down, and then I see the time event, I'm like, shit, no! And it was too late, and I'm like, oh, crap, am I going to restart? <laughs> oh, no, never mind. That's really funny. So it's it's those kind of things where, like, you know, I originally was going to name the most fun award the Golden Smile, because Hi-Fi Rush is going to get that award for me. And it was a matter of what game made me smile the fucking most? Hi-Fi Rush in goddamn spades. I never stopped smiling playing that game. Like, there was no point where that I felt frustrated playing it. There was no point I felt anything other than either smile or laughing. That was it. And, like, because it's carried with me, in the same way that, like, Inscription carried with me all through the year being a game that I finished from my backlog, Hi-Fi Rush, as many times as I've, like, played something else... Every like little once in a while, I come back and go, oh yeah, 
Fuck, I, I wish I, I need to at some point go back and play that game again because I haven't played it since it came out and it's been almost a full year now. So it's at that point that like, man, I can't go back now and it's almost going to be fresh to me again because I've forgotten most of it. Oh, it's Corsica. That's the girl. Finally, it pops back in my head as as I'm getting right to the very end there. But yeah, game of the year and, and congrats to them for, again, what I hope the industry does more often, which is take a shot on random things. I'm, I'm sure it probably didn't make profits as much as like another big AAA blockbuster would. But like, people are going to remember that game way more than they're going to remember X. Like, I, I know... I know for some people like Fallout or other games are going to mean a lot to them, but like to the average gamer, I think a game like Hi-Fi Rush being a one done, one and done and having the kind of uniqueness that it does is going to carry a lot more with people than say a Fallout 4 will. But then again, I'm also speaking as someone who has a negative opinion of a lot of AAA games in the last like couple of years. So I maybe have a little bit of bias in that opinion, but either way, Hi-Fi Rush, my game of the year. And it's not even close in all honesty, because this game is carried with me all through the year. Unlike a lot of games that people, it's like the Oscars where they always release movies at the last like couple of months so that they get nominated. Nah, this game carried the entire year. I don't care. Like nothing was topping this. I'm I'm learning that Adam is not only the weeb of the of the show, but he's also the art house and it, the guy in this podcast. Mm-hmm. That's true. Which is so that funny is because I <laughs> could give a fuck about art. I could, could not <laughs> give less of a fuck about art. Chris, what was your game of the year? Uh, so for mine in this crazy year that had every AAA franchise, every franchise that I adore, Zelda, Assassin's Creed, Final Fantasy, Star Wars, Harry Potter, um, Super Mario, obviously, even the Sonic game I haven't picked up yet. <laughs> uh, there's so many good, amazing games that came out. And somehow after all of that, the game I idolize the most and want to go back and play the most and love absolutely the most is sea of stars an indie game it is just it is exactly it's like it's my childhood and me now mixed into one like it was an homage to chrono trigger and a bit of super mario rpg which oddly enough also came out this year um but also like it had old graphics with as adam you were saying before with i think you're talking about best graphics like a pixel game that looks new, that has like modern lighting, that has all of this stuff. It had incredible gameplay. None of the battles to me ever got boring because it was always changing it up on what attacks you need to do in order to break the enemy. I thought the graphics were obviously incredible. They were nostalgic and modern at the same time. The writing of it, obviously it's a like it's meant to be like an old school JRPG. It's not meant to be insanely great story-wise it's meant to be kind of 90s corny saturday morning cartoon super nintendo game like it's meant to be like that and they nailed it by also having some really really cool moments especially if after you beat the game you went back got 100 percent, and rebeat it where you then got the true ending um oh no it is it is good um it's honestly just one of those games where everything they set out to do and everything I was hoping it would be, because I was following this game since like 2020 when they announced it, it nailed everything exactly as I wanted it to. I didn't even plan on getting 100% in the game, but I couldn't put it down. So I was like, well, I might as well work on this achievement while I'm playing. And eventually I just had 100% and I was like, oh, damn. I didn't think I was actually going to do that. I thought that one achievement would be annoying. And technically, yeah, the achievement would have been annoying, but I didn't want to stop playing. So I just kept going and kept beating enemies and bosses and stuff, even though I'd already 100% of the game and got the true ending. So that is something that does not happen often with me because once I have 100% of the game, especially a JRPG, you get all the weapons, you beat the boss, you get the true ending, I'm done. I'm like, uninstall this shit. It's been like 70 hours of my life. I'm ready to move the fuck on now. And this one... I think I only hit like 40 hours too. Like I did everything plus that extra and it didn't even take a ridiculous amount of time. So yeah. Also the soundtrack just got uploaded to Spotify. I was about to say, if we had a best music award, that was going to win it for me. Yeah. They just uploaded the soundtracks. They did it in three parts, which is very smart because the game has a day night cycle that you can switch between and the soundtrack changes as you change the time of day, same song, but like a nighttime version and a daytime version. So they released three soundtracks. I think the third one is this pirate band. That's always playing the songs yep. in the game, in every pub you go into. One of the soundtracks is just that pirate gang playing the soundtrack. It's so and then good. the other two, it's so good. It's so catchy. Yeah, Kalen's not going to care about this game. He'll like the soundtrack just for the oh, pirate God. music. Oh yeah. I'll check that out. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, and then there's the daytime soundtrack and the nighttime soundtrack. So it's the same soundtrack three times, but from a very different angle where each song does sound like a remix of the original. And it's kind of hard, like, well, which is the original? The daytime, the nighttime, the pirate yes. band? Everybody knows the pirate band, obviously. <laughs> um, but yeah, like the soundtrack just got put on Spotify and YouTube. So you can just throw it on there and just enjoy. So I highly suggest everyone, if you don't have time to play the game, listen to the soundtrack. It is charming as fuck. Like it will delight you. It'll make you feel like you're in the nineties. It'll make you feel like now you're a kid again, you're an adult who knows? Like it just, it, it is so good. It is just all the good emotions and happiness in one soundtrack. So yeah, see a stars for sure. Nice. Um, for me, my game of the year, um, I'm not going to be pretentious like you guys. I'm going to go triple A um, because that's what I do. Um, for me, it's Spider-Man. Spider-Man 2 for all my gripes, for all the problems. Um, the thing I found with all the games this year that I was considering, like we had nothing but amazing games, but no game stood out as being like perfect, right? Like I've talked about Tears of the Kingdom. I've talked about... Um, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I've talked about everything wrong with Final Fantasy in that game. It's not a consideration. But, like, you know, I look at things like Starfield, and Starfield was good. But it's not a great story. The gameplay is kind of boring, but I kind of got lost in it. Um, you know, I look at things like a, there's a bunch of games that I played, and none of them, like, hit perfectly where it's like 100% a perfect game. However, with Spider Man, Spider Man did something interesting. And, Adam, you alluded to this, or you said this in your part. It does everything at least great. Right. It never fires off and does perfect, but it always does good enough. And it squeaks up the middle. Like, is it like the best character driven game? No. Is it the best story game? No. Is it the well, it is the best graphically looking game? But like everything it does, if it's not doing it the best, it's doing it the second best. So for all of its problems, for all of its complaints, it still does it well. Like there's nothing where I'm like, this is a glaring issue. The boss fights kind of suck. Uh, you know, the Peter Parker as a character kind of sucks in this one. But I really like Miles. I really like the story. I like Craven the Hunter. I like Venom. Like, I like a lot of the things of this game. And the things I don't like are still really good of this calendar year. And so for me, I was just constantly wanting to play more Spider-Man. I never got tired of it. I never got frustrated with it in the sense that, like, this game sucks. Like, it never felt like a chore to play. And I finished the game and I want to go right back in it. I never once fast traveled in this game. Like, I was always web slinging. I'd go and I'd see a job or a side quest and there's not a side quest in here where I'm like, man, this feels like a waste or filler. Like you do the side quest in here and you get rewarded for doing them. Like it is yeah, probably side quests the... that set you up for like the next game too, where it's just like, no, they're not just side yeah. quests. They are important in, in a lot of ways. Like, I mean, yeah, it has the, the thing of it gets repetitive. Like you do the Sandman aspects, you do, you know, the, the hunter nest, like, it has that same open world bullshit, but it's never sprinkled to the point that it's overbearing or it's too much or like it feels like a chore. It's just like, yeah, I want to do this. Yeah, everything feels good. I think I think this might be one of the most perfect open worlds from a sense of it not feeling overwhelming and not feeling like a chore to do it. It's actually fun and enjoyable, but in a way that it's so reserved in how much it offers that it doesn't overstay its welcome. And I think that it strikes that balance perfectly. So for me, Spider-Man is is Spider-Man 2 is game of the year for 2023. Yeah, I definitely agree with the open world aspect. Like as someone who has quit several open world games or rushed to the end of several open world games, like even though it wasn't this year, Forbidden West just is keeping the joke alive. Uh, Starfield was very much like that. But like a lot of games have either I've stopped entirely or have rushed to the end because I'm like, man, this is too much. I'm never going to get this all done. Cyberpunk's actually done a pretty good job too because the gameplay is so strong. Spider-Man mm -hmm. is exactly that where, like you said, even all the things like the Hunter Nest and such, they're not so many of them that they feel like like the Merlin Trials in Hogwarts Legacy where there's like a hundred of them. And you're like, this is ridiculous. Like there is mm -hmm. no reason for them to, for there to be this many. The most you're going to do for most of these side quests is like, what, like six to eight nests or something like that. The, the same yeah. aspects are like 15 to 20, but you're going to pass by them throughout your entire journey of the game. The only ones that might be a little difficult are the uh the spider bots because there's a bunch of those but that is strictly like collectible there's n like there is a sort of prize story-wise at the end but it's not integral to the main story so much as it's just like a fun little nod 
So it's more like something that you get to enjoy for finishing it. But even then, like that one, I, I still like that was the one that I think I would complain about the most. And I still was like, nah, it's fine. I'll just pull up a guide and just still traverse. It's still fun. But it's not even bullshit because like it, it pings and like you it's pretty like not that it's hard. It's hard to miss. Like you can easily miss if you're not looking. But like they don't just sit there hiding like they ping and they give no. a pretty generous like window that like. I see that that blip and I'm like, oh, I want to figure out where this is now. And so, like, yeah, I haven't finished them all and collect them. I'm sure there's some that are a little bit more BS than others. Yeah, it got to a point where I was like, okay, I'm not coming across them normally all the time now. Screw it. I'm just going to go through a guide and get this. So that way I just complete it because I don't want to spend the entire Mm -hmm. time just slinging around hoping I find something. But, but you uh, think of like a lot of collectibles and it's usually just like a little thing tucked away in a corner that you wouldn't see unless you're like, looking yeah, yeah. At. this one is kind of like, hey, look at me. I'm over here. Yeah. And my follow up to Kalen is out of curiosity, because I know you're playing Baldur's Gate three. Do you think if you have more time into this, that it would weigh in your top three or is it just like you can't really make a decision because it's too soon? I am really happy you asked because this is something I wanted to talk about. Baldur's Gate is not on this in no, no way reflecting of its quality. I am really enjoying what I'm playing with it. It's it's a problem that I just haven't played enough of it. Like I am still like I'm not even through the first act yet. And you guys can take that up with the wife because she's just I'm playing with her and she's just so busy that like we don't get a chance. To if play it is important so, to ask, because obviously for a lot of people this year, that was the game of the year and you're the only one that's started playing it. So, yeah. So do not take it not being on any of these lists. I just put it as a DNQ simply for the fact that I just haven't played enough to make a judgment. For what it's worth, this the amount I've played, it very much has game of the year qualities to it. It probably is like an amazing story. It like the gameplay is okay, but like there's a lot of great things and it very well could have been at the top of the list, if not on the list. I just because I'm only so early into it, I don't want to put it on here just because I feel like that's a misrepresentation or putting it on there because it's I've not like I would be doing it because that's what we're hearing a lot of people do, and I don't want to do that. So Next year, when I finish it, we can have a more rigorous. Maybe it'll show up on the backlog, you know, game I beat that wasn't from this year. I mean, I know it's something that that somewhere down the line, if it gets a nice price, I want to poke uh, this guy next to me and be like, hey, do you want to co-op this shit and see what happens? Yes. Yeah, so That's what my backlog needs. Baldur's well, Gate. Jesus. Right? right? <laughs> And then we can, and then we can both, all three of us next year will we'll unanimously vote it as the Jen and Chris Classic winner for the year. Let's go with that. <laughs> awesome but cool. I, I love the fact that like spider-man 2 was on all of our lists but all in different places i feel yeah. like that we should kind of make that like if we, if we had to pick a, a pixel like if there was a de facto prized... game of the year from us as a whole it's obviously spider-man 2 because it's the yeah. only one that was consistent it, it was yeah. consistent across the board there we actually go. i think the, the correct Spider-Man. answer is final fantasy 16 right just clive <laughs> clive is game of the year no I mean, to be fair, it did win some awards in this in this year's round with us. It could it put did. most dis- most disappointing game. <laughs> Man, that game could have could have applied for all hype, no finish. But because I had no no interest in that game to begin with when it was first announced, I'm like, nah, it doesn't even qualify for that. At least nah, Hogwarts, I I, it was like that it. was a hard award to do because I'm like, I don't think there was a game that I was super hyped for that wasn't that was disappointing. I think it was just a matter of like, well, I hope this game doesn't suck. Oh, it sucked. <laughs> Well, you know what didn't suck this episode and this year in gaming. So thank you so much for our listeners who've been sticking with us. Thank you so much. We greatly appreciate it. We're going to be taking a couple weeks off for vacation. So there's going to be no episode next week. That is December 26th. Uh, we're yeah, going to be something, off something as Christmas, well, you know, as well as December 2nd. So we will see you guys on January 9th, 2024. Thank you so much. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Uh, if you like that, you want to hear more blah, 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 link tree pixel. You've heard this before. If you haven't go to the other episode, it's there as well. We're going to be doing another episode though on Friday. So if you want to check that one out, uh, we're going to be doing our Christmas wishes for t- this year in gaming. What we kind of hope for It's going to be fun. It's going to be ridiculous. Check it out on YouTube if you're not there. And with that, we'll see you guys next year. Bye for now. <laughs>